The third and final plot that we're going to use in order to visualize features of our time series is what we refer to as seasonal sub-series plots. Let's use an example again, the A10 time series, just to remind you what this looks like. Here it is. So a strong positive trend and also strong seasonality. Remember, this is the Australian anti-diabetic drug sales in millions of dollars. What is a sub-series plot? Well, a sub-series plot is a plot that plots together as their own time series the each month or each quarter, each season, basically. So in this first plot here, basically what I've done is extracted all the Januarys of my data and plot them as their own time series. In this panel here, we've got all the Februarys and so on. So in this case, I'm not sure that the sub-series plot is any more informative than we saw from the previous plots. Let's just repeat some of the features that we saw previously. So there's an increasing trend in each of the months. Um, this blue line shows you the average um, value of the time series within that uh, period, within, within the month, for example. So this is the average um, January value. So basically the average seasonality and obviously uh, as we saw from the strong seasonal components and the analysis we did in the previous uh, plots, uh, January is higher than February, which is lower than March, and everything else is sort of the same. There's a bit of an increase in December before we got to the spike of January. So in this case, we're not finding any new information by looking at this third plot. So a suggestion is that, and what I usually do would be to plot all three time series, start with a time plot always, then look at the uh, season plot and look at the sub-series plot and use only the ones that bring me new information to my analysis. Let's have a look at another example. Okay, another a slide to recap what sub-series plots are. So data for each season is collected together in a time plot as separate time series. It enables us again to look at seasonal patterns that uh, underlie our time series. Um, and also it allows us to see some changes in seasonality over time. So the function we use is GG subseries. Let's have a look at another example. Remember, this is uh, the beer data from the OS production table um, from 992 onwards. So we looked at this before. We said this strong quarterly seasonality with a spike being at Q4. And also we contemplated, or we, we by looking at this, um, we sort of contemplated that there is a, a sort of long-term uh, negative uh, trend, okay? Oops, turn to that. So having a look at the sub-series plot, what do we see here? So what we, what we uh, identified before, the Q4 is the highest quarter of uh, beer production, um, Q2 is the lowest, and then we have Q1 and Q3. One interesting pattern that we see here and we didn't see before, we weren't able to recognize before, at least I couldn't recognize it, is that the decrease in the trend is, is due to quarter four going down. So there's um, a the production in quarter four in the spikes has got a downward trend on its own. Okay, and this, uh, this um, very sort of low point here is the Q4 that we saw Previously, we recognized that it wasn't as high as the others. So when we go back to this graph, it's not a general trend that is going down. It is a trend in the Q4 that is actually diminishing. So the difference between the bottom of my seasonality Q1 and Q2s and Q4 is actually getting squished. Okay, and I can see that by this downward trend in this sub-series plot. So in this case, this graph bought me something more than what I saw, at least with my eye, in this plot or in the seasonal plot. Here's another example. This is a, a tourism uh, data set, tourism table. This comes from a lot of the consulting that we did for Tourism Australia. Um, we're going to filter uh, from this tourism uh, table the purpose of holiday travel. So only people traveling around Australia with the purpose of holidaying. 
Then we're going to group these by state and sum them up. So basically, we end up with a table that has um, the tourism flows around Australia. This is domestic travel for the eight states of Australia. So uh, in, we refer to states and territories as one of the same here. So let's have a look at the time plot of this. So it's not probably the probably not the best representation. They're a little bit squished, but the time plot gives us uh, some features that we can see. So um, first of all, we see strong seasonal components across uh, all the time series that we see here. So going down the colours, we have ACT, New South Wales. This, these are the several states and territories in, in Australia. Um, another feature that we sort of would see if we expanded our y-axis a little bit is that there's a bit of an increase in trend since the 2010. So this is increasing uh, for New South Wales, which has the highest number of visitors across the state, um, and the purple line, which is Victoria and Queensland. So the three highest states with the most uh, people visiting uh, for holiday purposes in Australia is uh, the New South Wales, um, Victoria and Queensland, and then the other states are sort of bunched together further below. Let's have a look at the seasonal plot. And here I'm using GG season as we introduced it in the previous section of the book. Um, we also have, we wrap these by, um, by uh, states so that we can uh, facet them in two uh, rows just to make it easier to see. So by looking at the, so at the season plot, we something very obvious jumps out. And the thing that jumps out um, from this plot is that the seasonality in some states is very different to the seasonality in other states. So the Northern Territory is very different to New South Wales, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, and maybe Western Australia, and so is Queensland. So if you think about the geography of Australia, New South Wales, South Australia, Victoria, Tasmania, all um, east, uh, southeast states in uh, in Australia and Western Australia is in the West. Uh, Queensland and Northern Territory are the Northern states of Australia with tropical weather. Hence peak um, demand for tourism happens in Q3, which is the winter quarter in Australia. So um, New South, all the Eastern and Southern states are visited mostly in summer. The Northern states are visited mostly, um, or especially the Northern Territories visited mostly in Q3. Queensland has got a couple of spikes. So again, it is in the winter quarter in Q3 that um, Queensland is mostly visited, but also there's another spike in Q1. So it's very different to the Northern Territory. Um, nobody goes to the Northern Territory in Q1, but a few people go in, uh, go in, the Northern, in Queensland in Q1. The sub-series plot in here, in this case, so we have the seven, uh, the eight time series across uh, my Y axis, and we have the four quarters across the X axis. Um, they're very squishy. They're not, I'm not sure how informative, is, how informative this picture is, but there is, there are a couple of sort of observations. Maybe this observation here in the ACT, something jumps out of the normal. Um, and also we see these jumps in increase or the increase in, um, in Q1, Q2 and Q3 for um, Western Australia.